Hi, it's Jeff Pulver, and welcome to another edition of The Creator Economy. I thank everyone for tuning in from all over the world. I noticed we have a friend from Australia joining us. Uh, give a shout out to Suzanne, who I have no idea what time it is where you are now. And shout out to Mark and to Jacob, who's in uh, Northern Israel, and to Chanel, who's in uh, Toronto, and uh, Lauren and Chanel producing the event. It's been an interesting week uh, in NFT world. And um, thanks for joining us. Uh, just as a follow up to last week's show, for those of you who may have tuned in who want more basic information about getting started with NFTs. Uh, last week's show inspired me to create a new class at Pulver EDU. And on Wednesday, which is tomorrow for me, uh, some of you may be living in the future already, but um, for where I am at the moment, I will be uh, teaching a class um, in about 24 hours, in less than about 23 hours time about the basics of NFTs. And uh, if uh, Chanel, if you could share that uh, in the link, um, that would be in the, in the chat, that'd be great. And in, any of you who are watching, not inside of Zoom, if you're watch, catching this live on LinkedIn or on um, YouTube, if you would like to get into um, this, this particular episode, you're gonna have to go to pulver.com and uh, request access. So just to catch up, uh, joining us shortly will be my friend Jacob Nier David, who has pioneered yet another field, which is uh, wine and NFTs. And we'll be, Jacob has been an earlier guest and we're gonna be talking about um, uh, the, his, his last NFT um, project and uh, what he learned from uh, pioneering that field and sort of what, what happens next. But before I get there, I just want to mention that um, I've been working on NFTs myself, and uh, we have an NFT drop. Um, for those of you who are who like to participate in the NFT drop of the week, which are those people in the audience, uh, this this is a link to the NFT that you will be given if you could fill out the form. Uh, Chanel, please uh, drop the uh, NFT link for this week's um, it's a Wufu form. But if you could uh, fill out the form. Um, actually, I don't see the form link, Chanel. Is it there? Um, I just see, I just see that you says, I don't see the link to the form. But if if you fill out the form, uh, you will be given uh, after after the show, you'll be sent the NFT. And um, what I am um, sharing uh, this week is I have a, a new collection on OpenSea. In the past week, I uh, minted uh, approximately five hundred. Uh, new characters of a, of a growing collection. And uh, this character that's for this week's show is actually a preview of the next collection. So um, uh, depending upon if you know me and we've met before, back in 2009, I started the 140 Characters Conference, which was the first global happening for Twitter, uh, where I hosted events all over the world, looking at the effects of social media on, on business and on life. And uh, sticking with 140 characters is a theme now that I'm creating characters, I'm not going to stop this collection until I get to 140 different characters. Not variations of a character, but 140 different characters. So the total number of uh, characters in this uh, collection will be a lot. Um, and I've learned a lot through the process too. So uh, anyway, before I bring on Jacob, uh, Chanel, how you been? Uh, any, how, how's, your, uh, how's, your, how's the past week been for you? Uh, it has been great. I was surprised uh, 48 hours ago. My sister uh, dropped me a little husky puppy, so I've got a, I've got a new dog I'm taking care of. Yeah, and he's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, did you name your dog yet? Um, he, uh, yes, his name is Kaya, uh, and Kaya is an old Turkish word which means forgiveness. Uh, it's also the name of an old Bob Marley record, so there's two for two there, so I can't go wrong with Kaya. Oh, and here I thought you'd go with Astro or something, but okay, fine. Well, I liked I liked the Jetsons theme with Astro, but when I learned the meaning of the word Kaya, I, it was too hard to resist. And uh, have you been growing your NFT collection, uh, Chanel? I have started producing my own. What it's going to be? It's going to it's going to be my short little science of an ast uh, of an image of an astronomical image. Um, and so it, it's going to be posted uh, on OpenSea, the same portal uh, that you've been talking about. And we'll talk about later today with our guest, Jacob. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll be a once a month drop of short little science vignettes explained by me. Wonderful. Well, I, and, and, and I really do encourage everyone to bring out the creator in them to, um, 
you know, th- th- we're, we're, we're living in this, this buzzy uh, area of the creator economy. And I, I don't think we needed the advent of web three to say that we now have creators versus um, non-creators. I think everyone's creative. I think we, we have creativity in us with us and it's just a different phase of, of, of who we are. And um, so I, I would strongly encourage really, if you're passionate about a topic to, you know, jump into that creativity and express yourself. And uh, we've just seems that the internet seems to be more in sync today about people's passions and being able to do things. And uh, before I publish an open sea, I actually have an NFT collection up on a, on a rally. And uh, I could just, for those of you who are involved in the rally ecosystem, um, there is a, I have an entire uh, collection of NFTs. I have music NFTs that I created um, and I'm actually co- collaborating with seven other artists right now on music NFTs. And an artist friend of mine, Joyce Bryan, she, um, I published as, as if I was a, a art gallery, I published her art uh, last week. And it's, it's a, just a very interesting dynamic about where things are going and where's the value. And um, how does this work? Um, but the, the creator economy is raising literally billions of dollars uh, for other startups. And you know, it, it, it is certainly going to not go away quickly. Uh, yes, we're living in a bubble. Uh, but at the same time, there's something fresh and something new about what we're happening. And, uh, you know, I, I feel as if, um, you know, people who've wanted to create and were shy, now is not the time to be shy. But we'll see. It's just, uh, but I do think it's the unique case studies. And, and, and again, the, the trouble about talking about NFTs is that um, most people do not necessarily run into a non-fungible token in their day-to-day life. It was like, hi, Chanel, have you run into the NFT today? Like, no, because it's, it's a digital image. So it's like, how do we personify a digital image? Uh, and, and then when you actually sell, tell someone I'm um, selling these NFTs and someone says, okay, I just bought it. Could I use it as my icon on Twitter? I said, no. Well, can I print it out and put it on my wall? No. So what exactly did I buy? Well, you have the opportunity to go to this website and stare. That's mine. I own it. Now, now, Jacob, at least, he has a functional NFT because with his NFTs, when he associates, associates it with wine, there's a potential of receiving a bottle of wine or maybe six bottles of wine with an NFT. Um, and then it does something. At least there's a function associated with it. So not all just saying stare. Um, and then, you know, there was a good news the other day or the last week or the other week before when Samsung announced that, yes, not only could you stare at your, your NFTs on a computer screen, but now on your home TV, you can also have alternative viewing of that. And so that's a start. But the thing is with NFTs, it's not about what we're doing today. It's really what's going to happen tomorrow. And, and I, I think what, where this gets really interesting is, is looking at how NFTs are going to be used in branding and in, in customer loyalty and in marketing in general. I, I do believe that we're the early ages, early days of, uh, of um, new customer loyalty programs. And it's since the creation of the NFT is just time-based. And then once you have it, it takes almost nothing to mass produce NFTs. You could look for major consumer brands who want to be cool are going to jump on the NFT bandwagon or some already have started. And that you're going to be able to download the NFT associated with the brands that you most connect to for reasons which you'll never understand, but there they'll be. They'll be in your digital wallets because um, it looks cool. And at the same time, it's reinforcing that brand back to you. So, but it's, it's inevitable that in the next six months may billions of dollars will be spent by companies who don't understand NFTs to work with consultants and advisors to create them. And when they realize what's going on, it'll be too late, but it's okay. Uh, everyone has value, right? We're, we're always intrigued by the things we don't know. Uh, you just have to know a little bit more and you're the expert. Uh, but then the actual value comes in because frankly, I do think it's kind of cool. You know, there's collectibles is a different industry, totally different marketplace. And if you ever watched antique, ever been to a flea market, if you've ever been to uh, antique collectors, you can appreciate the, the novel approach to certain things. And some people feel attachment to products. Some people feel attachment to inanimate objects. It's, it's, we'll start to see what happens. I, I recently was shown a floppy disk that had a software program I wrote on it that must be almost 40 years old. And it's like, okay, that's cool. And I threw it away. 
because it's like okay it was I, I don't own a computer anymore that takes floppy disks that's what i gonna say you don't have a disk drive to play it no, anyway. i don't have a disk drive so i i tossed it away i i used to write code that was proof positive i wrote code i was a software publisher but you know, NFTs will have more value, but at the same time, it's it's really, uh, I think, symbolic of a change we're going through much more than the value today. But, you know, what's cool about in pioneering an industry is you get to have the, be the first people, the first persons to start to see the f future. So uh, I'd like to bring forward a friend of mine, Jacob Nierdevit, who is CEO of many companies, chairman of a few. And today we're talking to you wearing your hat for Vincent. Uh, Good evening, and uh, thanks for joining us from uh, Northern Israel, Jacob. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. So, uh, for people who are not familiar with your recent experiences with NFTs, could you share what what, what led up to the uh, Open Fam uh, NFT? Hello, Hello Fam. Hello okay. Fam. I wrote. I, I'm thinking Open C. Excuse me. Yes, Hello Fam. Yeah, you can you can find Hello Fam on Open C, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, you know, so it. I'll actually take you back about uh, two plus years which is um, I was at an event uh, of blockchain enthusiasts called the Satoshi Roundtable. And I led a discussion there on this weird thing, which uh, uh, I called non-fungible tokens. And we didn't know yet that, that we were supposed to call them NFTs. We, 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 we wrote out and said the whole thing, non-fungible tokens. And because everybody else there were obviously talking about fungible tokens. They were all uh, obviously Bitcoin already uh, uh, and then uh, Ethereum folk and so on, but mainly Bitcoin, which is obviously all fungible. There's no difference between you know this uh, fractional amount of Bitcoin that I have or or the fractional amount that you have. Uh, if we both have 0.1 Bitcoin, we could swap our 0.1 Bitcoins, and they're exactly the same. So, but I was there saying, hey, but we we can use the power of the blockchain to actually record unique objects. Um, and then it became a question of how to bridge the physical world uh, and the digital world. But the whole point of my discussion at the time was taking a product which I had gotten to know extremely well, which is wine, and saying, can we create digital tokens that represent individual bottles of wine. And I can explain why that was interesting to me or, or why I thought that was an interesting idea. Since a business, what was your business at that time? Uh, I mean, I, I own a winery, so I was interested in, in wine from that point of view. And I also had just was get, just getting off the ground a marketplace for boutique wineries to sell direct to consumer. And there's big problems in the wine industry of authenticity and provenance uh basically fraud um and i saw the blockchain as a great way to fight fraud uh or or in the positive light to better ensure authenticity um for for wine particularly premium wine or uh what some people call fine wine um and and that was kind of a, a push for me but i had always you know as, as jeff knows been involved in various ways of using technology to change the way things are and it's always been a passion of mine so right now i'm just applying it to the wine world but i was already thinking about these tokens at the time there was still the kind of last embers of the ico craze and people talking about utility tokens and most of them were were obviously nonsense but uh i was already then saying let's tokenize the wine world, but I didn't really kind of have a, an ecosystem to play in. You know, flash forward a couple of years, when you look at what's going on with what we now say NFTs, is all of a sudden you've got trading platforms that exist that have critical masses to people on those platforms, whether it be OpenSea or, or others. Um, but you and, go back a little bit. I mean, do you look at these caricatures and you wonder how in the world do Pudgy? What? Why is a market cap of Pudgy Penguins or some of these <laughs> various uh, uh, ape collections worth so much money? Like, what's up with that? Well, the, because well, uh, f first of all, you can the same way that we can defend why Bitcoin is today worth you know fifty six thousand dollars a Bitcoin. 
I remember I asked uh, you, Jeff. Did it? I mean, I'm, I'm just curious. No, but I'm saying I remember I asked. I remember I asked you uh, during the uh, a little while ago during the, the former high of Bitcoin, and I said to you, you know, how do you defend Bitcoin being worth uh, fifty six thousand dollars? And you said, oh, because it's on the way to a hundred thousand dollars of Bitcoin. And if you think Bitcoin could be worth a hundred thousand dollars, then of course fifty six thousand is justifiable. Right. Uh, <laughs> So I, I, the way I would justify why, you know, your picture of a bored ape uh, could be worth forty or $50,000 U.S. is because that's what the market currently says it, it's worth. That's, that's the only justification for it. Um, um, no, look, and, and the reality is that the art community has existed before crypto, will exist after crypto. It's not something that's hot or cool. I mean, people have put value on things which they collect. And so, you know, ever no, since... Of course. Of course, of course. Right. But so, so, so I, I had. I mean, I was at a, 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 a um, yeah, in a, in Miami in December. There was a, um, in 2017. I was at one of the first live NFT demos where there was an artist who created this very unique piece of art, and they actually were NFTing it in front of us, and they were telling us we're creating tremendous value. Do you want a piece of it? And I just said no. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I think if you. So look, if you say, if you say, go, going with what you just said now, right? Well, the art, the art world has always existed, and 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 some art has been, has been bid up in price, right? It's, the art itself has become a way of storing value. Yeah, right? I've got I've got thirty million dollars. Uh, I could I could put it in the in the bank account. Um, you know, if this was you know thirty years ago, we would talk about buying uh, CDs, uh, but I could put it in in a yeah. bank account. Um, or I could in, invest it and take that $30 million and, and put it into a piece of art. But I want to know that that art, right, is, is mine, is unique, is non-fungible, right? There's just one of those pieces of art or that I have one of only X number of them. If, if I had one of millions of them, it would obviously be worth much less. So I think the, the power of... NFTs on a blockchain is that we are verifying the scarcity of this item, um, and, whatever well it may the, be. and the authenticity of that item. Yeah, the, the authenticity and the and the scarcity. And, and um, I'll, I'll also add that in the case of art, blockchain art, that the creator, right? Every time there's a resale, the creator gets a royalty at their option. So if you could imagine uh, Andy Warhol's, um, you know. A family forever getting royalties on his art. Um, we're, we're living in those days where artists and, and creators can for, have this forever perpetual return. On right. Creating. I mean, again, again, it's nice to say forever, but going back to your floppy disks, right? Yeah, it will. It will. So, end. It, it, it definitely. It's, it's forever. Out. It's forever as long as this current technology lasts. But, uh, but on the other hand, you know, you threw away the floppy disk. But let's say on that floppy disk. There were images, or, or even the code that you might have wanted it. So you could have uh, either yourself or, or paid somebody to convert what was it, whatever was the content on that floppy disk, into a something on a hard drive which you could access, or to put it in the cloud somewhere. Um, you know, but where these are all kind of moments in time, right? So if we think that putting something into Google Drive makes it that it's going to stick around for a while. Well, Google could go out of business tomorrow and there, there goes all my content. I, I actually renewed my Flickr account a few weeks ago because I got noticed <laughs> that my, my photos are going to be deleted and that scared <laughs> me. And I realized I could not find the original uh, drives where some of these photos were. So I, I'm probably one of the only people on this call right now that still have, oh, oh there's a floppy drive. Thank you, Michelle. Um, that, and that's a three and a half. I had a five and a quarter yes, uh, on Sunday. But. <laughs> Um, real, you know, probably real fly. to have a, a Flickr account again, just just so I could preserve my my those memories. But it, it is, you know, it it is true though. I mean, the whole and that's one of the falsehoods too, right? It's it's like I'm on Rally right now. Jeff Coin exists on Rally. There's a whole gamification of a game, and there's art there. But you know, if Rally goes, if Rally disappears tomorrow as a company, what happens to all the assets? What happens to all that? It's it's kind of hard to say and. OpenSea, at least, I know that there's, um, you know, a you know, it's 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 hard to understand some of these things. But transitional 
I think there's no going back. I, I think that, you know, we're, we're living in a time where this type of creativity will be embraced, even, even if we don't understand some of it, but, but value is being created. And I think, you know, in some cases there's capital appreciation, but also I think there's that uniqueness of access. And, you know, I was thinking about, right, but you remember, let's, let's remember, right. So, uh, OpenSea is right now riding on two different uh, blockchains, 99.999% uh, on Ethereum. Hey, I'm, uh, nice to you. I'm on Polygon. Thank you, right, Jacob. Now, save me. Exactly. You know, I, I, I could not afford to be so generous to do an NFT drop if it wasn't for this man on the call with me today because <laughs> I, I, I was so excited. I was doodling, creating like what? I have to pay twenty dollars per person to send them. To give something like <laughs> free? Are you kidding me? But lo and behold, you mint it on Polygon and it's free. Exactly. But so you know, so but, but we're 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 we have to rely on these blockchains remaining, and the blockchains themselves, as you, you well know, right, are only incentivized to remain around as long as there are all these miners and you know all the the, the blockchain kind of ethos of uh, what keeps these blockchains around. If those blockchains dwindle, uh, then they could go out of business. In other words, they could disappear. Um, somebody could take over a blockchain, uh, obviously a 51% attack or any of those kinds of things. So the, we, we are putting a lot of trust in these things because we think they, we can trust them more than your Flickr account. Because if, 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 if Flickr does <laughs> flick out, <laughs> Somebody snuffs Flickr. They were sold many years ago. I give them credit for keeping my photos alive all these years. That, that's incredible. I didn't know Flickr still existed at all. So, um, you know, I, I, it's the same people who have Yahoo email addresses, you know, as long as Yahoo, you know, keeps it around. Yeah. Um, and, and I know people who still use their Yahoo email address. I, so, I know people who use their AOL addresses. Yeah, I, yeah, thank you. I can shout out to my mother who's using her AOL address. Um, so... I, you know, I, 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 but going back to the the this physical, you know, kind of virtual uh, world, and you know, there's an interesting um, uh, case study on the website of a venture fund called NFX. Um, people can go check out nfx.com, and they um, uh, invested in an NFT related venture, which is called Stoner Cats, and it's an animation series, but the only way you can see the series um, is if you own one of the stone cats, one of the stoner cats. So, it, so they are using the the NFTs as both unique. Each cat is different, uh, so there's unique art, uh, collectible art, but they're also an access token to be able to see it. You can't see the content if you're not an owner of a stoner cat. Right. The pro the problem is that the NFT sale went very well and the secondary market has done pretty well. So the floor price mm -hmm. of a stoner cat today is uh, thousands of dollars. You know, oh. So, you know, I, I, I'm sure it's a great animated series, but do I really want to spend, you know, thousands three, four thousand dollars? Probably not. Probably not. Maybe if it came with unlimited popcorn, I'm not sure. But oh, but don't get me started. <laughs> I, I have a whole theory about digital popcorn. You know, it, it was at Vaughn in 2006 that I first spoke publicly about what happens, who gets to earn the popcorn when when movies are no longer being shown in movie theaters, but only exactly. at home. Exactly. And, and, I, and I actually have a whole ecosystem where I actually believe one of the u tremendously wonderful use cases for NFTs will come from Hollywood or people who see ways to empower the, 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 that popcorn. Um, right. By the way, by the way, you know, post uh, COVID, I mean, we're still obviously suffering from COVID, and and obviously we send uh, prayers to everybody who who is still suffering in any way. Um, but in Israel, we've tried to reopen the economy. Oh. Um, and so yeah, so they they reopened the movie theaters, but the the government said no food, meaning no popcorn. Um, so the movie theater owners said, "No popcorn, no movie. Right. We're not, we're not, we're not well, opening if we can't here. sell popcorn." Yeah. 
Wow. So they, they, they had to go, they had to go to, to saying yes to the popcorn. But, you know, if we go back to the, the, um, this, this, you know, concept of, you know, does something need to be an NFT? So on the NFX website, the reason why I'm, I'm recommending people to take a look at it, because they question themselves in the case study uh, as to does this really need to be an NFT? Does this need to be an NFT? Um, well, I don't think anything needs to be an NFT, but I think you should ask the question, how is this better you know, as an NFT? How is an NFT improving whatever we're trying to do? So in the wine example, um, I can, can point to you to two kind of core reasons why NFTs help uh, in the in the wine collecting or wine trading community. So one is if the NFT is linked directly to something on a physical bottle of wine, and a shout out right now to one of our tech partners, which is a company called Lava, L-A-A-V-A, who created a uh, smart fingerprint that can be put on every bottle of wine for uh, very little money. Uh, it's much better than a QR code, but not as expensive what, what and much more universal. Printed? And is it lava or just lava with a silent A? It's like two A's. I think they just say lava, but uh, wow. it's, an Australian, it's an Australian company. You know, big big uh, shout out to all the Australians who are on the, on the call with us. Um, it's an Australian company. And they created these smart fingerprints which are unique. Each one is, is, is unique. Both the visual is unique, the actual fingerprint that goes on the, on the bottle, and then they're all serialized so that I can link that bottle to the NFT. Um, and so I can, can compare what I see on my NFT to, to what I see uh, on the bottle. And then uh, the, where you take that a step forward is if I then gift that NFT to Jeff, uh, for having me on his show, or if thank I you. thank you se sell it to Jeff, or uh, uh, then okay, fine. there you go. Sell it to Jeff. So then I transfer to Jeff this uh, token. He now owns the wine. Now where is the wine? Now if the wine is sitting in my house and Jeff has the token to this wine, well it means that Jeff has to come to my house. He's got to got to knock on the door uh, and say hey. Where's my wine? Can I come and take my wine from your from your cellar in your house? Um, now, as long as Jeff and I are in good terms, I'll say, sure, come on in, go go claim your wine. But you know, if uh, something happens, God forbid, and we we have a falling out, yeah. uh, and I say, oh no, you can't come in, then Jeff's kind of stuck. You know, he's got he he technically owns the wine. But but I but it's in my cellar, um, so go have fun with your NFT. Um, now, where it really works is if we have the wine stored in, for example, a, a trusted third-party storage facility, uh, cellar facility, and then Jeff shows up with his token, or he, you know, get, gets in touch with them, obviously digitally, and says, "Hey, I've got the token. Uh, I'd like to redeem it and and send me my wine." So now we've got a way for collectors to be able to freely uh, trade with each other, engage with each other. Um, so that's kind of issue number one uh, that it solves. Issue number two is that under American and Canadian law, as well as a few other jurisdictions in the world, uh, you can't actually sell a bottle of wine to your neighbor. Um, a small uh, technicality. In, a small technicality. In, yeah, in America, it's actually a federal crime to sell oh, a bottle of wine to big, your neighbor. Big technicality. Okay. A <laughs> big technicality. It's a leftover from prohibition days. Um, so you could you could sell your neighbor a, a shotgun, but you can't sell them a bottle of wine. <laughs> okay. Wow. So and the only way to kind of get around that, and Jeff and I, you know, have the history of using technology to get around regulations, particularly ones that are outdated. Um, the way to get around that is to say, I'm not selling my neighbor a bottle of wine. I'm selling them an NFT. Uh, part of the rights that come with that NFT is that it can be redeemed for that bottle of wine. Um, and now I'm, I'm free to sell that NFT to my neighbor. 
And, and now specifically for your wine, um, for, for the, um, I guess, version one of your NFT or maybe version two, have you, uh, have you thought about ways to keep um, the engagement level high? So like if I come in and I buy that NFT that represents either a, you know, a seedling or, or a bottle and I, I get six bottles of wine um, and now it's ready so that you ship it out because I claim it, um, have you thought about ways to symbolically keep those customers engaged so that they are, are having fun with the process? Yeah. So first of all, it allows the, the these NFTs can themselves or obviously can 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 change over time. They can be programmed to change over time. Um, what does it mean to change them? They can be programmed to evolve um, over time. But through, through. they also they um, the the Genesis Vintage uh, is was a collaboration between Vincent and a group led. Um, uh, by our friend and advisor, Adam Garamayan, who also runs the Untamed Elephants uh, NFT community. And they truly are communities. I mean, and that's the important point, which is that you have to look at this as a, as, as a community and, a, and building a community. Um, so the way to keep people engaged is to share content with them to, for example, the HelloFam Genesis Vintage uh, is a specific uh, cuvee, a specific blend that's being produced at my winery. So we're, you know, updating the community all the time with content on the Discord channel, uh, on Twitter, and so on. So you you can kind of keep them engaged with content about what you know what what's happening with the wine. Once the wine is kind of ready uh, to be released, then there's an interesting dynamic that can go on between and by the way the the genesis vintage we created unique art for each nft so each art has a unique grape uh so there's uh, 600 uh, grapes and um and and you're right and a bunch of seedlings the seedlings are not are not uh, unique but the the grapes are and so each grape is unique as a as a piece of artwork on its own the woman who created uh that artwork, uh, Haya L, which is a she's an accomplished visual artist. I think the artwork on its own, you know, obviously has value, but but it also represents a, a case of a case of wine. It's when you redeem the NFT, though. Uh, so then there are fewer uh, of those NFTs around. So the, the there's more scarcity of those NFTs of the of the art itself. Um, and th that now you've reduced the amount of wine because once we send you the wine, you know, wine's a consumable product. The assumption is you're going to drink the wine. Now, if you're taking the wine to, to, because you don't trust the seller, that the seller in, you know, service that we're going to provide, and you want to have it in your own private seller, you're essentially taking it out of the community, right? Right. Um, and and you're so when you're removing it out of the community, we basically we don't know if that wine even exists anymore. We don't know if you've drunk it. We don't know if if it, if you if it fell when you were carrying it to your house and it's now broken glass. <laughs> right. Uh, we don't know anything about it. Um, so it goes off our radar, off the community radar. Um, oh, the question that came up, by the way, is: Do you return or do you have to return or destroy the wine NFT when you claim the physical goods? So the short answer is for the for the that, that hello fam genesis vintage the answer is yes for uh future nfts that we will be releasing we already have plans for when you redeem it you receive a different nft meaning one that doesn't that no longer uh that no longer represents the wine because the assumption is you've you've drunk the wine or whatever you did with the wine um, you poured it over your head, whatever you did with it. Um, you anointed the next king. You did something with it, right? But so, 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 but so instead of saying you redeem it, it gets burnt, and now you have nothing. Well, maybe you should have some sort of again going back to the idea of the collectible. You should now have a collectible. You now have an empty bottle, NFT. Yeah, um, bottle with the wine label on it. Where, which, 
Yeah, yeah, tell you, which has sentimental value. Um, you know, there's a uh, there's a uh, I always uh, forget the name because it, it it's it's like Rip Van Winkle, but it's not. It's a uh, Rippy something, uh, uh, a very well known uh, bourbon whiskey, which uh, is traded up to crazy prices, um, and even empty bottles. If you go on eBay, empty bottles, you know, are going for hundreds of dollars <laughs> as, wow. as collectibles. Um, wow. You know, so there's a collectible market, right? Right. Uh, definitely is, right? And so we're, so what we're, what we're seeing, though, is ways to take the collectible markets, bring it into 2021 and, and, and say, okay, well, there's intrinsic value. And then we can actually create even more value because we're, once again, if, if not rethinking, we're reinventing things that 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 existed, but bringing them forward. Right? We're rethinking um, how things can happy, work. Pappy Pappy Van Winkle is the name, not Rippy Van Winkle. Pappy That's Van Pappy Pappy Van Winkle Bourbon. Pappy Van yeah. Winkle Bourbon. It's Van a Kentucky Winkle. a Kentucky bourbon. Okay, Pappy Van Winkle Bourbon. Things you learn on the Creator Economy. Okay. Uh, wow. Um, so by the way, your, your local Vincent community, the local community of folks, uh, uh, where you where the winery is, have, have any of them support, have gotten into the NFT world? Have they watched what you're doing? And, uh, asked sure. You? Yeah, yeah, of course. And they're the, all the uh, world. They're the, you're, you are living in a place where if I'm still, if I'm not mistaken, there's still more cows than people. Is that true? <laughs> in my town, that is true. Um, the cows that I, the cows that I pass on my on my uh, daily uh, trail run, don't seem to care that much about NFTs yet. But um, in the in the certainly in the wider world wine world, people are definitely paying attention. Um, there's been, I think, the Hello Fam Genesis Vintage is the largest release of NFTs that are backed by wine, but. Um, but there are there, there have been a few other smaller uh, release. There's a very well-known winery, uh, Bordeaux uh, winery called Angelus, that released one NFT, one NFT that represented one barrel of their wine. It's a very wow. expensive wine. Um, we we sell their wine on uh, Vincent, um, and so this was one NFT. Uh, so that's it. You can you can find it on OpenSea. But it's there's just one, um, uh, so we with 600 NFTs, you know, representing some 3,600 bottles of of wine, uh, I think is the the largest release yet. And we now just completed a an internal release. It was only available to the people who were part uh, who are part of the Untamed Elephants uh nft community we released a nft backed by wine that we're making for that community uh which is called pink elephant parade which you can find on OpenSea as well but you were only allowed to mint uh pink elephant parade if you already owned an a an elephant um so it was very uh restricted uh but if you look on OpenSea, you can see that a bit over a hundred uh, of those NFTs were were minted, um, each one representing, uh, as I said, six six bottles of uh, of wine. So, so and NFTs and wine are, are alive in northern Israel. That's a beautiful thing. It's uh, it's great to it's great to hear this. <laughs> so really fun. Well, uh, when people actually want to get their wine as a physical good so you know which could be any physical good that somebody burn their image to get the physical good. you'd have you have logistics issues with wine it's all the more so because it's it's fragile it's heavy there's regu regulations involved um I, um I so the you know, wine, wine person, we very much, go ahead. 
I'm, I'm, your connectivity is dropping at times, or it's either lose me. I don't know which, but I, I seem to be losing you at times, Jacob. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, Jacob, it's your it's your Wi-Fi. Uh, it's it's dropping packets. We're getting packet drop. Um, now I've dropping got, packets. Dropping. Oh yeah, it's all there's a lot of video streaming. You know, it's uh, you know, maybe now would be a good time to go to the audience and see if they have questions about uh, what we've been talking about for the past forty minutes about uh, one NFTs and NFTs in general and your specific experience in, in minting and pioneering a new field within NFTs, which is the uh, wine futures. Um, anyone here who's joining us today live uh, have any questions? Please, uh, and Chanel, please identify. Uh, so far, we had the one from Ja that you asked, Jeff, in the chat. Um, I don't see any other ones. Um, uh, let me just do this this one question because I think this is going to be a, a, a general question. We had a question about the uh, the Ethereum address that you want users to provide to you, Jeff. Can you just briefly describe? Is it the Rally Network ID that you want? No, 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 no. The the uh, I, I haven't. Uh... Unfortunately, um, on Rally, it takes 10 business days to mint an NFT, uh, plus I have to fill out some forms. So if there's anyone here who's on Rally who wants to receive uh, today's NFT of the day, I will go forward with the process and it will be available probably in early November. Um, but I was looking on the form for an Ethereum address. Uh, on OpenSea specifically, but most of the sites which trade NFTs, there's a wallet address that, if, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm actually using a different blockchain, but it's compatible with Ethereum that I can use a lot of address. So it's um, it, it's just a way to do the drop. So it's it's a uh, if you happen to have an OpenSea account or some uh, an Ethereum wallet address, it's just the address to send the uh, asset uh, that was minted for today um, to your address to the address. Um, I hope that answered the question. Uh, and anything else come up, Chanel? Uh, no, but I think that was good. So you can find this address, as you said, um, uh, on OpenSea, on Coinbase. Uh, MetaMask also has the Ethereum ID that you can yeah, use. So, so if you have any of those kinds of apps or utilities on your phone or your computer, so the person asked the question, you can just provide that. Uh, that, that yeah, and, and specifically, if you would like to receive this, this NFT on Rally, I'm more than happy to uh, go through the process of minting it on Rally. It's just that I created this uh, image this morning, thinking about the show today. Uh, arguably two weeks ago, I wasn't thinking about, uh, or 10 business days ago, I wasn't thinking about minting this specific image. My entire creator experience is um, brand new. You know, I'm on that edge of learning where this is still fun for me. And uh, my doodling is improving over each day. Um, it's just one of those things. So, um, so Jeff, maybe one more question. Uh, I, I see there's actually a, another question from Brian. So we could do two if you want, or if we can return to the conversation. It looks like Jacob's back. What would you prefer to do? Uh, let's do both. Okay, so, let's, so maybe let's do um, a, another little bit uh, of an aside. And just briefly uh, do a plug for the the uh, NFT 100 class. A uh, couple of questions came up. Will you learn how to you learn about Ether? Uh, is that different from a Crypto 100 class? What are we going to do tomorrow in this NFT 100 class? What are we going to learn? Uh, the NFT 100 class is really for anyone who wants to uh, feel free to answer, ask any question about NFTs, uh, but may have been afraid to ask. Uh, specifically, Chanel and I. Uh, we'll be demonstrating uh we'll be talking about opening up setting up a metamask account setting up an account on OpenSea. i will go to rally.io and uh dare i say i mint i minted an nft for tomorrow's class to give to everybody which theoretically is priced 10 times the price of the class so um because jacob was the one who suggested ah when you're pricing your nfts if it's uh anything that's under 0.1 ether you know it's fine so Using Jacob as my pricing expert, everything's at 0.8 or 0 .0 0.8 or above. So, to, so tomorrow's class, we're going to go over what a non-fungible token is versus a fungible token. We're going to go over, and we do just just literally hands-on demos of opening up MetaMask, going to Rally, um, going to um, OpenSea, um, minting. We're going to actually do a minting process. We're going to do a transfer. I'm going to show show during the in real time sending a, a, an asset, a, an image, if you will, from my computer to Chanel's computer. 
and we're going to, uh, I, I'm not going to show the creative process of how I create NFTs from a drawing perspective, but we will go through the basics of how you too can be a creator on OpenSea and get things started. And I will show some of my NFTs over that I have on Rally for people to just get ideas of the diversity of NFTs that are available. And we will we'll be taking questions from the audience. If the class is set up to be a minimum of 75 minutes, I have, I have actually an hour and a half allocated for class tomorrow. And it's, it's really meant to go through anything and everything that comes up. I actually have an agenda, which is rare, but I'm going to follow my agenda on the Eventbrite for the event. There's actually um, the agendas inside of Eventbrite. And it was based on what we on part of the conversation from last week here. And uh, really, I just, you know, it's, it's words come by it, the, the, the vernacular. We have this NFT in the vernacular and no one really knows what the word means. And you know, in 2018, I, I stand by what I said then that Bitcoin and blockchain were the two most overhyped, misunderstood words in the history of humanity. I think NFT is coming right up there, too, in terms of uh, that we could probably go to any place in the world and someone probably heard the term but have no idea what it means and uh i'm just looking to break that a little bit and share some information about um what how that works chanel okay so we actually have uh, two questions related to the conversation that you and jacob were having so this is a good segue to get those questions and also to bring jacob back to our conversation um and the first was from from ja how are the logistics of redeeming a wine nft handle who covers shipping does the contract ever expire? What happens if the owner of the NFT dies or the winery goes defunct? Jacob? So uh, I'll start with the end, which is the wine. Um, this is, the, the, we're only releasing NFTs for wine that already exists. Um, and that is soon to be bottled. Um, and the wine is then stored at a central storage facility. Um, the initial minting price kind of takes into account um, storing that wine for a certain period of time. And then the going back to the conversation we are having earlier as to, you know, what does forever mean in a world where things keep changing? Um, the idea is that the, uh, some portion of the transaction fees, you know, of the of the trading, will cover the the, the cellaring for as long as it's cellared. Now, working backwards, in terms of the logistics, when you do redeem, so we can't include shipping in the price of the original token because. Um, we don't know where you are or what the regulatory environment you're in. So for example, there are jurisdictions like Korea or Australia, uh, China, where the shipping costs might be very high and the customs fees might be 100%. So you basically uh, have the right to your wine, but you have to cover the shipping. Can you check with your today? Okay, uh, thank you. Um, did you. Did you want to add something more, Jacob? Or? No, I was trying to tell my 10, 10 year old daughter that I'm in the middle of something. <laughs> uh, I, I, I hear I hear you. That's that's my problem too. Um, okay, so Alana also asked Jacob, uh, I have a question about how to follow the value of wine and wine entity. Given these things, of course, can be burned. And so these things can become more scarce. Uh, how do you follow? How do you track the, the right, value look, of the Right, again, we were at very early stages, right? Of, of how do we track value? of nfts right now the dominant you know trading platform for you know uh for for ascertaining value is uh is open but it's not the only uh trading platform there are others um and, and hopefully uh many others will will develop but you know very similarly you know when you are a, a company that has a stock that's traded you could list on multiple exchanges mm -hmm but there's kind of a default to listing on some main exchanges, whether it be NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, you know, London Stock Exchange, you know, what have you. Um, so there are companies that are, are dual listed or tri triple listed. Um, and I think the same thing will happen uh, with, with NFTs. But the difference is that um, 
you know, the NFT has to live on a blockchain. So you have to decide what blockchain it is that it's living on. Uh, and then whatever platform you're on has to essentially integrate with that with that blockchain. Um, because when you buy it, there has to be a handshake and you have to move it from one wallet to another and everything else has to take place. I'm not trying to steal the thunder of tomorrow's show, of <laughs> tomorrow's class. No, no, but, it's fine. Uh, it, it, by the way, is it? Oh, I just posted, is it openc.io slash collection slash hello fam hyphen wine? Is that, that's where you are? That's the right. Um, that's right. where the Genesis Vintage. Yeah, that's the Genesis Vintage of uh, of uh, Hello Fam Wine. You could also on it, or was it Ethereum? Was it was so? It, that's a theory, that that was Ethereum. Oh, um, and the reason the reason is because the Polygon hadn't been released yet. Ah. Um, so we had to go through that, and and it was an environment that kind of people knew already. Um, so there were the gas, there were gas fees and all that stuff, uh, which, which were a hurdle, um, for people. Um, now though, it's interesting, uh, is going to the trading or even gifting it to someone because we had minted, uh, that Genesis vintage as a, you know, straight on Ethereum, even if I want to just gift one to Jeff, it will cost me money just to send him the NFT. Um, you know, for because of the gas fees, whatever it may be at the moment, yeah, it's, it's... It, it, exactly. So, there are there is friction, you know, built into that. Built into that. Um, on the other hand, just to give a, a shout out to a blockchain which we also use for authenticating wine, uh, outside of the NFTs that we've done, which is um, uh, right. Ravencoin blockchain. So, the Ravencoin blockchain was. Uh, designed for assets uh, to to record uh, assets, and we're quite familiar with it. Um, and there are the beginnings of NFT marketplaces that support Ravencoin uh, as well. There are assets that are registered on Ravencoin. Uh, the trouble is, it's not you know that many people that are there or that are familiar with it. Um, it's a growing community. Um, but as as we said earlier, community is is a big part of all this. So we will be releasing a a wine series on Ravencoin, um, and it's something that we're we're working towards, hopefully relatively soon. Uh, again, but you know, tools have to exist. They have to exist in terms of how to mint them, how to then you know list them or buy them or trade them, and all those tools are are falling into place for Ravencoin as well. So we're at the very early stages of a, really a revolution in how some things will, will be marketed and sold, how customer loyalty is evolving, and how um, a sale doesn't end when something is purchased. So we're actually seeing a continuation. It's, if you will, a, a, a continuum in play. And I think that is a shift in marketing, which I was hinting at at the very beginning of the show, that when you look at the evolution of NFTs, for those people who are looking into the future, you know, the sale doesn't necessarily end anymore when you when you purchase mm -hmm. the payment is made. There's the opportunity mm -hmm. for brands to make it a continuation play so that you're now part of the lifetime of the of the consumer and to be engaged in things which never before were possible. I mean, I'm sure people when Jacob, when people have tasted your wine after purchasing it, they may have sent in nice words to you or may have included or tagged your wine bottle in, in Instagram posts, but how often do you actually get people telling, you know, continue, continuing that conversation uh, from season to season? Here, with, with these NFTs, you actually do have that chance to be part of the continuum of how these people not only purchase your product, but, but consume it too. Right. And so, I, and, I, and I think if it works in wines, it's going to work um, in most consumer goods, from 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 wines to cars, to um, really things that we may not think are um, non fungible, but the the other part about a, a non fungible experience is if you, for example, you know if if you're running a conference like I do from time to time, and we have so by default you can use a, a, a you know this you could use a, an NFT if you're minting a hundred and you're saying this is the registration. This is how you get in. It's a hundred uses, but it's it's just one per person. 
but you could also make it unique that, you know, if you're buying a wine NFT, it might be that Jacob, who is a wine connoisseur, can share with you 30 minutes of his time and baked into the price of one of his NFTs, maybe 30 minutes with Jacob. There may be another NFT, which includes a three hour uh, discussion of winemaking with Yehuda, which is his uh, co-founder on the winery, right. right? And then you have, um, you know, if, and then you have, you, you right now you have tour, people who, who are visiting uh, Northern Israel can come in and, and do a, mm -hmm. uh, a winery tour. Uh, indeed. And, and, you know, other things that, you know, from a gamification point of view with NFTs as well, you can do things like, uh, you know, for every hundred cases that are sold via NFTs, you know, one of them could include, you know, uh, a private, you know, dinner at the winery or, you know, one of them could include uh a uh, a magnum size uh, bottle of wine rather than a standard bottle. You know, they people could be. Remember, you know, people remember Willy Wonka golden tickets, right? The gold, the gold, exactly the golden tickets. And you know what we've seen already, even with the Genesis Vintage of Hello Fam, you can you can go take a look at this on on OpenSea. Um, the there are signature grapes for for the for, in terms of the initial that initial uh, uh, minting we did and the signature grapes come with some of the rights that, that Jeff is uh, talking about. And, um, and the, 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 the signature grapes that are got awarded, there were only two of them for the, for the 600 that were released, there were only two that were signature grapes. Mm -hmm. Those, um, those uh, uh, already the people that own those have already turned down offers of uh, five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. What? Really? Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> um, the floor price, which again, people who are open sea conversant will know that that's the the lowest price that an NFT is listed at uh, for that series of NFTs. Um, the floor price for the Genesis Vintage of Hello Fam uh, is right now. You know, several times it's basically three three x what the minting price was. If you take into the account the rise of ETH, uh, the price of, uh, of ETH, then it's even more. Um, but it's fascinating because it represents for me the expectation value that people have, where they said, "Okay, I know there's a physical case of wine, so there's there's a." a, a Unlike some of these other NFTs, there's some, you know, value at its at the heart of it. On the other hand, they still have a lot of expectations of this community. They don't know how it's going to develop, but they have a lot of expectations for the community. So they've kind of bid up the price. Um, and, and it's fascinating to see, even just from a trading, uh, some people may know that Jeff, uh, way back when, was very involved in Wall Street. Um, and so from a, a trading point of view, it's fascinating to watch. Uh, it's only a, 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 you know, a fleeting moment so far, right? But uh, no one's like dropped the value of their grape, right? Wow. No, one's dumping, no one's dumping grapes. <laughs> back, back before Vonage happened, you know, 1998, I created the first marketplace uh, for voice over IP minutes, right? I created Minix that um, was uh, the it was, it was sort of like almost like a futures exchange for the delivery, the future delivery of VoIP minutes into a, into a geography, and it was Minix as a corporation that morphed into Vonage uh, in two thousand one. So, you know, I, I think exchanges and marketplaces are certainly purviews and sort of uh, a way to understand the future of how things evolve. And in the very early, early stages of this brand new marketplace is where we're at. We're at the, as, as much hype that has already existed on behalf of blockchain and crypto, as this now becomes part of our everyday life, I believe it's going to go through an entire new phase of it, where hopefully some of the terminology that's legacy will change. And we can actually use terms that are more meaningful to everyday people, but some words will persist no matter what. Sure, but I, you know, one of the things that I wanted to point out for, for your audience, you know, we are in the creator economy uh, show, and 
you know, the creator economy, the creator economy and issues of value or pricing are always incredibly subjective. So winemakers are creators, right? Yes. And, you know, what makes one bottle of wine valued at $150 and another bottle of wine valued at, at $15? Well, there could be some, you know, some objective elements, the same way in, in art, you could have some certain objective elements. But for the most part, it's a lot of very subjective elements uh, that make one bottle of wine, you know, $150 versus uh, uh, $15. And what's fascinating, you know, v Vincent, the wine marketplace that uh, has been co-producing these NFTs, you know, day to day, we, we're, a, we, we're a wine marketplace for boutique wineries around the world to sell direct to consumer. And we do these promotions almost every day by email to our uh, audience. And you can see, we'll, we'll promote a wine, which is a good, decent wine, which is $25 a bottle, and nobody buys it. And then we promote a wine, which may have a little bit more, you know, cachet to it. Maybe it's a little bit more well-known or whatever, which is $150 a bottle. And boom, we'll sell $5,000 of, you know, of wine in an hour. Wow. Um, you know, and so you say to yourself, well, why aren't, why aren't people buying the $25 bottle of wine? Obviously, we feel it's, you know, it's of, of quality. We wouldn't put it on the platform if, if it's, you know, if not. But, you know, sometimes subjectivity takes precedence over uh, economics. And somebody says, hey, I've heard of that wine. I really want that wine. I know it's of a, there's, there's a limited allocation of it. If Vincent is releasing you know, 120 bottles of this wine, I better snap it up. Um, and, and so people will pay $150, $200, you know, a bottle, um, It's which is fascinating. It's just fascinating to watch. It just, and, and it's wonderful to be on the, on the cutting edge of something new again. It's just, it's, it's fun to watch and to observe and to, and to learn from that. And uh, on that, I'm going to say thank you for joining us uh, for the Creator Economy today, Jacob. Uh, those of you who've participated in uh, the NFT drop, you'll be getting your NFTs the next hour or so. If you haven't, or if you joined the show after the last time the form was filled out, Chanel, can you just put it in one more time, please? Uh, this is the yes, last- Yes, I'm dropping the link now. All right, I'm sorry? I'm dropping the link now. Oh, thanks, all right, so click on that link. Uh, the link will be good for another hour or so, but the, uh, and it's one NFT per purse per address. Um, and uh, anyway, that will happen. And tomorrow is NFT 100, 100. It's not 101. You know, we can go NFTs 101. We can go NFTs 301. But I, I really want to just help extend the baseline for where we're at because the creator economy is many things to many people. And uh, I'm just fascinated with um, the way we can rethink the future in, in ways that um, we never thought about. And it's true, as Jacob was hinting, that the future of NFTs are not necessarily on Ethereum. They'll be on blockchains, which have less friction, and they'll actually be hopefully consumable and consumer-friendly interfaces so people that are not from the crypto world don't have to deal with these things called wallets. I mean, you know, I, I really think that the market could be 10 times or 20 times or 100 times the size even today if legacy terms and legacy customs were not implemented, that we could find a much easier way to make it so that you know, in the days of voice over IP, the old question was, is can your mother, can you call your mom? Can your mom use this? Can, could your grandmother receive it? Now, of course, if my grandmother in heaven can talk to my mom in heaven, that'd be a different conversation. A different <laughs> but, but the idea is, are these interfaces usable good enough um, for that? And I'll tell you, my own experience with most of this is no, these interfaces are terrible. I mean, yep. terrible, and who, it's, it's, it's just absolutely true. It's not that the emperor is not wearing any clothes because he's buck naked. I mean, he may wear, be wearing a gown, but frankly, to get involved, it requires so much at work, so much friction. And, and for people that are generally really smart, it is really hard to get going in this. And it's just difficult. So the, the people who are involved in building those bridges and tunnels to bring us from where we are to where we go, it helps simplify and demystify the crypto. That's where the money is right now, I think. And, and just making it damn simple that if you see a piece of art that Chanel created and you want to buy it, it should be two clicks and it's done. It shouldn't be having to say, gee, what's MetaMask? What's an address? How do I make this happen? Right. So I'm hopeful for a future where that stuff is, um, 
you know, worked around that we can disintermediate some of the legacy crypto words to bring it into a consumer friendly or future, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm Jeff Pulver. Thank you for tuning into the creator economy. I'd like to thank the guests for, for hanging out for the guest of the day, Jacob near David hanging in here. Uh, I'd like to thank the audience for um, participating. A shout out to Chanel who produced the show. Uh, Lauren, who's somewhere here too, was co-producing it. And uh, we'll be back next week. And each week, by the way, I am looking for people who are creators to come and talk. And so if you happen to be a creator, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, if you're someone who's collecting NFTs or other types of uh, creator assets and like to talk about your experiences, it's, it's open game to me. My email address is still jeff.pulver at gmail.com and feel free to hit, to hit me up if you'd like to, uh, to be a future guest. I'm going to sign off for now. Please uh, shut off the broadcasting, guys. And thank you, Lauren. Thank you, uh, Chanel, for everything. And uh, thanks for tuning in. And um, have, have a good rest of your week, Jacob. Thank you. Recording thank you. stopped.